Hello folks, welcome back to Siddha Coder. My name is Ravina, and today we are going to solve problem number 141 that is linked list cycle. So let's start by reading the problem statement. It says that given the head, the head of a linked list, determine if the linked list has a cycle in it. There is a cycle in a linked list if there is some node in the list that can be reached again by continuously following the next pointer. Internally, Position is used to donate the index of the node that tail's next pointer is connected to. Note that position is not possessed as a parameter. Return true if there is a cycle in the linked list, otherwise return false. So what we have to do essentially in this particular problem is that we have to detect if there is a cycle in the linked list. So if you can see from this particular diagram here, we have 3, 2, 0, 4, uh, minus 4. And then this minus 4 is again pointing to node 2. And if we keep on using the next pointer, as we move forward, you can see that this is a loop and a never ending loop. And so here we can say that there is a cycle in this linked list. If you don't know what are linked list, uh, I would encourage you to see my video on linked list that I released last week. That will give you a very good understanding of what linked lists are and how to use these pointers and basically just how to encounter and solve these linked list problems. So let's move on to the notepad and see how can we solve this one. Okay, so here I have taken the same example as we saw in the lead code and this particular problem is going to test your knowledge about two things. One, can you navigate through the linked list? And second, about a data structure, a data structure that will help you maintain unique values inside this linked list. And if you don't know about that, I would highly encourage you to see my video on sets. I released it a couple of weeks ago and it talks about what a set is, how can you store values in it and all about it. Okay, so here, as you have already guessed, we are going to solve this using sets. Um, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to maintain a set that we need. So we are just going to have a set. And what we are going to do is we are going to start from the root that will be given to us and then we are going to go through each and every element and store them in the set as we encounter them. And if we find it again, then we say there is a cycle. If we do not find it again, then and if we reach the end of the linked list, we return false. That means we say that there is no cycle. Okay, so here we just have to say if there is a cycle in this linked list. So we start with the first element, we encounter it, we check, is 3 in my set? No, it is not. Okay, so what I do is I add it and then I move along. Then I come here, I say, okay, I found 2. Is 2 in my set? No, there is no 2 in the set. Okay, I will add it. Let me, I don't need this. Yeah, so I add it. All right. So what is the next? Next is zero because it's going here. So we come at this particular element. We check is zero in my set. No, I don't see it. Okay, so we add that and then we progress. We check is minus four in my set. No, it is not. Okay, we add it. And then where is my minus four going? It's going back to this particular node two. Now we check, is 2 inside my set? Yeah, it is. It's right here. Okay, so we say that this one has a cycle. So this linked list has cycle. Now, one interesting thing about sets and a linked list actually is that whenever we store the particular node inside the set, it is going to store the address of the node. And so here, for example, if we have an example, say 1, 2 and 2, here you can see that there is no cycle. But at the same time, you see that 
2 is repeated. Okay. So, what happens now? Uh, you don't have to worry about it because whenever you store a particular node inside the set, the address of that node is uh, stored. And so, when you check for that, it is going to return the particular node. So, for example, let's do this again. It's pointing to 1. We initially, our set is empty. We see, okay, is 1 in the set? No, it's not there. We add it. And just so we see, uh, in order to, you know, distinguish between these two, I'm going to color them in two different colors. Okay. Now, I come here. I check, is this 2 inside my set? No, it is not. Okay, I add this 2 now. So, I added this. All right. Then I come here, I check, is this green 2 inside my list? No, it is not there. Okay, I add it. And then, as you can see, I have approached the end of the list. And so, once we approach the end of the list, we see that there is no cycle. So, we return false. And that means that we say no cycle. So, this is the positive case where, you know, it has no cycle and this is the case where it has cycle so i hope this explanation was helpful now let's move on to the ide and see how can we code this if you look here on the top you can see that this is the class definition and the pointer to go to the next node is dot next and dot val is the value okay so first thing that we actually need to solve this is having a set so I'm going to create a set and I'm going to name it visited. And so I have my set now. Oops. What happened there? Okay. And the next thing is I'm going to add a while loop that will go through each and every node. So I do while head. So while I have my head, I'm going to check if head is in my visited set. If my uh, head is in the visited set, I can directly say that it has a cycle. So, I can return, directly return proof from here. But what if it doesn't? If it doesn't, then I add it to my visited set. So, visited.add and then I just simply add my head. And later what I do is I increment my head. So, I increment my pointer. So, head is head.next. Once I'm done with all this, suppose I do the whole while loop and I reach the end of the linked list, then I know that for sure that there is no cycle. Otherwise, it will never come out of the while loop. So here I can say return false. So that it says that it doesn't have a cycle. So let me run it first. Okay, it is accepted. Now let's submit. Okay, so you can see that it was accepted. And uh, now let's talk about the space and time complexity of this problem. Since uh, it is going through each and every element exactly once, and we can say, see that here in head, um, the time complexity of this algorithm is going to be n. It is going to uh, look at every element once and also once we find a duplicate, we are returning true. So that means it is processing n plus 1 elements. And n plus 1 uh, is really n in terms of space and time complexity. So the time complexity of this is going to be O of n. As far as the space complexity is concerned, the space complexity is also going to be O of n because we are uh, saving all the nodes inside our set. Okay, so uh, the space and time complexity both are O of n. If you don't know what space and time complexities are, uh, check out my video on space and time complexity. That should give you a very good understanding of how to calculate it, what it is, and it is very, very crucial in interviews. Okay, so I hope you like this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel. I upload videos every week. Uh, so stay tuned for upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.